YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back. What's going on, y'all? Um, I hope everybody is well. Thank you for the well wishes on my last video. It's good to see y'all again. And um, we're going to get into like, you know, we're going to get back there. Going to get into the ankle stuff, going to get into like stuff, stuff, all kinds of stuff. But I wanted to come in tonight and y'all please excuse the fan in the background. I don't know how loud the noise is. I won't know until I play this video back, but just forgive me for it. It is hotter in this room than a habanero's ass. Like it is stern at the moment. But yeah, so um, I wanted to come in and I wanted to talk to y'all about some stuff. I still don't know what I'm going to title this video because it's like... It's not a relationship rant. The relationship is going fine. It's like every... What? Okay, let me just dive into it. Something will come to me. Um, Unrelationship rant? I have no idea. Okay, so the point is, here we go. So, it's been about two weeks now. And, um, first of all, like, to get the backstory here, you're going to have to go back to, like, the So There's This Guy video where I talk about Mike. And Okay. Mike is still in the picture, don't get me wrong. Mike is Mike is actually the whole picture. Um but so here we go. 2 weeks ago, after a a, a long and and pointed and in-depth conversation as we tend to have Mike and I decided to go public on Facebook. Um, we, we decided to include each other in our respective relationship statuses. And Mike and I have been together now coming up on, well, June 5th will be 15 months. Yeah. Yeah. June 5th is 15 months. A year and three months. Whatever. It's not a baby. It's not walking. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, we, we just decided because we, we both had people in our respective inboxes who, um, you know, who, who were sort of unaware of us, which is how we chose to interact with each other for, again, close to 15 months. And, um, and, but, but we decided that, you know, it would kind of just save a lot of confusion if, if we are, you know, if we decided to, you know, go public. And again, the, the decision to not be public was very deliberate. It was very conscious. It was very intentional. We, we both had some accelerated mishigas in our life and wanted to take the opportunity to really get to know each other in private. It was never a secret that we were together. Everybody that we really genuinely cared about knew. Everybody. Everybody. But see, again, like, we're from a generation that remembers, you know, the pre-internet years when you actually had to pick up a phone and call your girlfriend and be like, let me tell you about this dude. You know what I mean? Like, those are the days that I remember. So that's the decision that we made. Which wasn't easy for me at first, because I, I really did get kind of wrapped up into, like, the whole, it's not official, it's not valid until it's valid on social media, because I was a freaking idiot for a second there. But I digress. So we changed our relationship statuses to include each other. And the, the outpouring was amazing. It was amazing. It was astounding. Like, I was not expecting that at all. I mean, not not that kind of just outpouring of congratulatory support and, and, and things of that nature. It was very unexpected. Very unexpected. And, and extremely gratifying and extremely humbling and and it warmed my heart and it was beautiful but here's the thing you 
you know, I again, the purpose of this channel has always kind of been for the uplifting and the betterment of you. It's not so much about me working through my own stuff and illuminating every issue that I, I find myself dealing with personally. Like, that was not the goal. But with that said, I also feel like I am still a work in progress, as are we all. And I, I don't want to come across as this, like, sage grandmother willow-esque individual with all of the answers and, you know what I mean, just this wellspring of information who, who's so well put together that I can't be told anything because nothing could be further from the fucking truth. Excuse my language. So... So that happened, and again, well wishes and 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 confetti and the whole nine, and like, I, I was super happy about that. But what what I found and what I fixated on was that some of the people in my life that I really expected to have. Um, positive things to say about, you know, me actively going after and finding a really happy, healthy, functional relationship were nowhere to be found. And this is the thing, like, y'all remember that song that came out, I'm 99.9994% that it was Drake, um, talking about No New Friends. I put up a status on Facebook the other day, like, I'm, I'm glad I never listened to that because my new friends have been on it. Some of my old friends have got lazy. It just flummoxed me that, you know, people who have known me upwards of a decade, you know, to this exact date have yet to sort of acknowledge this pretty monumental thing that's happened in my life. And that's, it's, it's amazing to me in not a good way. And this is really outlining a huge character defect deficit flaw on my part. Because I am that person and I, I, I am, I'm striving to not be that person, but to date, I am that person who will get like a 98% on a test and fixate on the 2% that I missed. I am that way. And it's so hypocritical and contradictory because I'm the first person to tell y'all, like, keep your eyes on the donut, don't focus on the hole, and here I am, like, neck deep in freaking hole here. Like, I, I'm so angry at myself about this. It shouldn't matter. I know it shouldn't matter. Like, I need no one to tell me that it shouldn't matter. And, and when, like, over 200 people are praising the fact that you're in a relationship. How can you possibly focus on one or two people that aren't? But my whole thing is like, I expected those one or two people to be first. And they're not even in contention. You know, in the last season of Sex and the City, I don't know why this has stuck with me, but it really has. In the last season of Sex and the City, the series, um, I hope I'm not spoiling this for anybody, but, you know, I, I doubt it at this point. If I am, just, like, give me 45 seconds on mute and, you know, keep going. Um, go. So, yeah, last 45 uh, I mean, the, the last season of Sex and the City. Um, as Carrie is getting ready to go off to Paris, she gets into that, like, do y'all remember this? She gets into the confrontation-ish with Miranda, and the one line that stuck out for me, and I'm probably paraphrasing the fuck out of this, but was just something to the effect of, Miranda, I cannot continue to be single for you. And that shit resonates with me so profoundly, y'all, because I am somebody, you know, and believe me, I am not condoning, endorsing, a motherfucking thing. I'm not proud of this. But I am somebody who got so immersed in the lives of the young people that I was somewhat of a caretaker of that I completely neglected my own 
desires or or wants or fantasies about having a romantic relationship. I mean, I had a couple of doozies and you'll have to go back through my, I believe it's my Love's Ashes series to get some kind of idea of the bullshit I have had to contend with over the years. But honestly, like post David, there was like flatline, like they, they, baby, there was not a dog in a fight anywhere. And I was just, I, you know, I had adapted this, like, monastic lifestyle. I mean, all I was missing was a habit and a convent, like, honestly. And, and it was to such a degree that, like, it wasn't even a passing thought. I didn't even consciously consider the possibility of loving again or loving in a healthy, mutually beneficial, uplifting, affirming, confirming kind of way. Wasn't happening. And then Mike comes into the picture and, and that changes. It changes significantly. And it changes to such a degree that I had to like uproot myself from house and home just to get away from the vitriolic, insidious, cancerous relationship that I had with these people that I was caring for and housing and 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 essentially sustaining um just to be able to focus on myself and and the possibility that this great concept of love love in a romantic sense might even apply to me too see i didn't believe i was i didn't believe i was worthy of that and not so much in the sense of low self-esteem as much as, you know, I, I've had a great love in my life and it ended because he passed away. And do you get another chance at that? I mean, when, when you're a woman, you know, who's taken the road to womanhood that I have, there's a lot of layered, nuanced things like, do you even deserve, I mean, shouldn't you just be grateful to be alive and to not have gotten arrested for using the bathroom? Like, it's just kind of one of those, like, count your blessings, you know, don't, don't strive for more than what's good enough, you know, don't dare for incredible, don't dare for extraordinary, just be happy that you're getting by. That was the attitude that I had for a long time. It took, it took the better part of a year for me to realize that, I mean, I'm not benefiting anyone by playing small. N nobody wins as a result of my diminishing my capabilities or my capacity to engage in the human experience as any other human should be able to. Um, and, and then... And then the extraordinary began to look a lot more possible to me. And then, and then this happened. And to say I'm grateful for it would be like the understatement of the millennium. Um, but I can't sit here and say that I'm not hurt by the fact that people I've loved, people I've fed and sheltered and clothed, um, haven't found the capacity to wish me well on this journey as I know I would for them. I, I mean, the, 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 the biggest mistake that you can make in this life is, is, is believing that people are going to treat you the way that you treat them. And that's just the way that that works. You know what I mean? That's why I always dispel that, that, that adage, like, Treat people how you want to be treated. No, don't do that. Treat people how they want to be treated. Because everyone is not a reflection of you. We're not all Stepford people. We don't all have the same desires and goals. I mean, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm having a self-therapy session here even as I talk to y'all. But it's just, um, it's hurtful. It's hurtful when you believe that the people that, that were always going to be there to cheer you on aren't. 
and maybe it is a reflection of their dissatisfaction with their own life but at the same time it's like shit muster it up you know fake it till you make it hell it works you can bullshit yourself into believing just about anything trust me i know so yeah i mean it's just um i wanted to share that with y'all because it's 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 been on my heart and i feel like y'all deserve to get some some realness out of me um but as far as the relationship itself i i, <laughs> I could not be happier I, I i could not be more fulfilled and joyful and um and it's been a long time coming and i really deserve this like you really deserve that whether you have it presently or or not you you deserve it i know you deserve it because we all do we all deserve uh, the kind of love that results in a face like this and i know how doofy i must look right now but yeah so i mean i just i don't know i don't know if there's a solution to all of this but i just kind of wanted to illuminate that for y'all <coughs> And, um, and, and this is my welcome back video, y'all. Um, I'm gonna stay tuned for the end. Stay tuned for the end. Um, cause y'all should see what my happy looks like. So with that said, I pray that you're well and wherever you may go, please take my love with you. And as always, one love. Oh. <sighs>